So, Swipe a Cam, thank you for joining the show. Now, we remember you because earlier we made a take about Nikola Jokic and you uh, shouted us out, which we appreciate. And I wanted you on the show because I feel like you are the face of Nikola Jokic fans. I mean, you speak for every Nikola Jokic fan. You're a Denver Nuggets fan. You are very passionate. I One time I responded to your tweet, I'm like, not nah, everything's about Nikola Jokic. Oh, my gosh. But... <laughs> That's your fandom. You love Nikola Jokic. Now, why should he be MVP? Yeah, so number one, I appreciate y'all having me on. I love what y'all do. Obviously, big fan of the show. Um, y'all doing a great thing. Love the setup. Love the personalities y'all have. Everything you do, man. Like So hope y'all continue to grow and y'all blow it up, man. Take over the space, man, for real. All y'all bring some great energy. Thank you. Uh, I Thanks. think it's pretty easy for me. Um, <laughs> I ask myself – uh, in terms of how do you approximate value, right? So, you know, I've looked at the cases of Giannis Antetokounmpo all season, Joel Embiid all season, Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, Devin Booker, Jason Tatum, go up and down the list. And then you ask yourself, who has had to do more in order to get their team to where they are at this point in time? So if you look at the, t- the top three candidates, Giannis, Jokic, and Embiid, this season, Jokic has been without Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. All right, bet. Joe and Beads obviously went without Ben Simmons, but Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris and the rest of the squad stepped up. And then obviously you look at Giannis. Giannis had Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton at different points in time. So as I've been evaluating throughout the season, I have watched Jokic do historically great, literally unprecedented things the entire season while also being directly responsible for 46 of the Denver Nuggets' 48 wins they have this season. Now, why does that matter? So when he's been on the court, he's missed seven games this year. The Nuggets are two and five without him. They've won with him in the lineup 46 games. Joe Owen Bede, while he's been in the lineup, I believe that, that the 76ers have run 44 games. And with Giannis, while he's been in the lineup, I believe they've won 43 games this year. So per se, we're going to approximate value on winning. Well, who's won the most and been the most available? Well, that would be Nikola Jokic. Now, if you wanted to say the raw data, all right, bet. So 27.1 points a game, 13.8 rebounds a game, 7.9 assists per game, 58% shooting, 65% from two, over 3% better than anything Shaquille O'Neal ever did in his heyday, who had over 200 dunks in his MVP season. All right, bet. One of the best mid-range shooters in the NBA, shooting 52% from mid-range. One of the best interior players, shooting 80% at the rim. And then on top of that, he's been one of the best off-ball scorers in the NBA this year as well. So I'm putting it up. So he has a 66% true shooting percentage. Who else is able to rival that? Well, there's no other volume scorer near him, over 65% true shooting in the NBA this year. So he's been one of, if not the best scorer on volume all year. Y'all, over the last five games of the season, you know, money time, right? This is the time you're trying to get into the playoff. You're trying to make everything happen. Since the straw poll came out, Nikola Jokic is averaging 37.8 points a game, 16.6 rebounds a game, 6.6 assists per game, 2.2 steals a game, one block, and he's shooting 65% from the field on 38 and 17. So when I ask myself, value, what have you brought to the court? How have you contributed to winning? They are literally two and a half games away from the Milwaukee Bucks total wins this season. And they're a game behind the 76ers. And both of them have played with all-star level players this season. So my whole thing is, if Nikola Jokic can take Jeff Green, Aaron Gordon, Monte Morris, Austin Rivers, Bryn Forbes, and these role players to 48 wins on the season in the Western Conference without Jamal, without MPJ, and this is the other thing. The fact that he is shooting as well as he is, and on top of that, he's one of the only players in NBA history. Matter of fact, he's the only now. 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, 500 assists, but don't forget about it, 100 steals as well. 100 steals. There's only four players in the NBA that have a total over, over 90 steals and 60 blocks on the year. Guess what? Nikola Jokic is one of them. He's been a defensive anchor of the entire team all season. But here's the thing. This is the thing that people are kind of slipping about. He's obviously maybe the best playmaker, best passer in the NBA. That's subjective. You could say it might be Luka. You could say it might be Trey Young. But I would think he's the best passer in the league. Since March 1st, March 1st, this is 19 games. Nikola Jokic is averaging 31.6 points a game, 13.7 rebounds a game, 7.5 assists per game. And he is shooting 62% over that same time period. He's scoring at an all-time level. He's rebounding at an all-time level. He's facilitating at an all-time level. He's defending as the defensive anchor for his team. 
and they've won 48 games and 46 with him in the lineup, which is more than Yannick and Joel would be with them in the lineup. So when I add up the picture, and y'all notice, I didn't even talk about the advanced analytics because you know what? Yannick got to have that conversation to have the MVP conversation about Jokic. But just to bring it up, just because we're going to add it in as a side piece, not even the main course, he has the all-time PER at almost a 33 overall score in PER, shattered the record. He has the all-time box plus minus score ever, ever. Includes LeBron, includes Michael Jordan. All the greats is him. If you look at EPM estimated plus minus, he's the only player in the NBA, not just with a score above eight, but a score above nine. Literally, MVP tracker had him as number one all season on the MVP ladder board. But the only people that it took a while to catch up on were folks that were outside of the market, who I was telling since November, this dude is having a season you may never see again. So when you ask me about the MVP award, if I'm being objective and you're saying who's contributed to winning more than anybody else, who's been more valuable to their team's success more than anybody else, I think Giannis has the second best case in the NBA. I think Joel Embiid has the third best case in the NBA. Stats, raw data, team winning, advanced analytics, on-off splits, plus minus. It's far and away it's been Nikola Jokic. So if I wasn't in Denver, that would be my pick. But since I am in Denver and I've never seen a player like this in, in our city or state history, yeah, you know what? You can say I'm a little more passionate than others. But if we're just talking basketball, I think it's clear. There ain't nobody else. <laughs> what, do, what do we like, – mic drop? I mean, like that – Only thing I'll say is there's been one other time in NBA history where – Oh, my God. I look at the MVP award, and I thought that it should have went to the player who who was the most available, whose team was in a worse position, that he ended up having team success. And it's that 2018 season where LeBron came oh in second in MVP. I knew it was coming. Listen, no he led him total points, total rebounds, total assists. He had the higher field goal percentage out of him and James Harden. Shot the same three-point percentage. Had more minutes than Harden. Had more games played than Harden. Had more triple doubles than Harden. Harden's team was the best in the league that season. Were they number one and the Warriors were number two, correct? They were one, yep. So that's why Harden had an all, he had a great season for sure. But, he averaged more points per game. But Giannis or Embiid don't have the best team in the league. But they are in a better position. He mentioned it. They're only two games higher than the Nuggets right now. Giannis does it on both sides of the court. And for me personally, I have Giannis, I have Jokic, and then Embiid last. Wow. So that's the only reason why. You're right. They're se- separ- separated by two games. But in terms of impacting... Both sides of the court, I look at Giannis, he's the best compete, complete player in the NBA right now. You could debate that he's the best player in the NBA right now. In my opinion, he is the best player in the NBA. So that's why I look at it in, in that sense where we saw once where statistically it favored one other guy who was in a worse position that had to do more for his team to have success and didn't end up winning the award. Well, I think the difference with that is that James Harden averaged 30 points on the season they had by far and away the best record in the NBA. They won 65 games, and LeBron was the fourth seed that year, I believe. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Okay, so James Harden definitely deserved that MVP. Four. No, Indiana was four. I think we were four from what I remember, but I could, you could be right. I'm no, sure. no, you guys were fourth. Pardon me. Because right now, the Nuggets are sixth. I mean, but you said Giannis was the most complete, but I don't. I don't agree. I think the Joker shoots better than him. I think he's a better playmaker than him. I think they're around the same type of rebounder. I think the Joker, he's a, he's just offensively, I think the Joker is a much better basketball player than Giannis. Defensively? Defensively, your Joker has gotten better on that he aspect, has, but Giannis, no Giannis obviously is different. But if you're talking about just a complete overall game, I think at this point right now there's still – a little bit of weaknesses in Giannis's game. Like what? He's improved uh, his mid range shooting. He's improved, but I don't think that's a strength. The three point it is a strength not. now. I, I don't think. His I don't mid range shooting I, is. A strength. I don't his think mid range. I don't think it's a strength. He like, shoots forty four percent from there now. I mean, that's above forty four percent is cool, but I still think like fact. I, I'm, I'm, I'm where talking, he was I'm at one point. I'm talking about the, between the Joker and Giannis. I think it's clear so, who's the better shooter. Of course. Now we know that three pointer is still not a strength for Giannis. So I think like so when you talk about Is it a comp- necessarily a strength for Jokic? He can shoot it. It's not a strength. I think it's a strength. So What's shooting thirty three percent? Oh. Yeah, if I can if I can interject on that course, Giannis man. point, I th- I think it's I think it's fair to say Giannis has been great. But mm-hmm. who venue, another great, great content creator, 
who venue put out a tweet the other day in terms of what players do versus top 10 defenses this year. Giannis is averaging 27.2 points per game, 10.9 rebounds a game, 4.9 assists, but he has a 59.1% true shooting versus top 10 defenses, which is an over 4% drop off from what he does on the year on average. And he's also minus 73 in those games as well. So he has a significant decline versus the best defenses in the league. Now that's elite. That's still elite contribution, but comparatively, Nikola Jokic this season playing in top 10 defenses is averaging 27.2, 13.6, 7.2 with a 65% true shooting. And he's a plus 42 in games played and minutes played versus top 10 defenses this year. And I've had this conversation before. I understand Giannis is a great offensive player, but Giannis is a significantly worse playmaker, a significantly worse shooter, and a significantly worse offensive architect than Nikola Jokic. Nikola Jokic, when they played against the Bucs, they won by 36 points because Jokic had 18, 15, and 10 through three quarters. When Nikola Jokic played against the Steven Adams yesterday in the Memphis Grizzlies, again, top five defense, he had 36, 16, and 6 on 67% shooting. So if you go up and down the list and what he's done against all of these great defenses all season, they beat the Miami Heat by 20 points twice because Nikola Jokic is sitting in the middle of defense with Monte Morris and Aaron Gordon on his wings. So I do think there's an argument for Giannis. I love Giannis. I think he's one of the best two players in the NBA. But again, if you have the conversation, why has Giannis had more success versus those teams? Look at his record without Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton in the lineup. Because that's exactly the same thing that he would be going through if he was Nikola Jokic right now. But Nikola Jokic has taken his team further with significantly less help. So my whole point is, if we're approximating value or approximating best player, if you have an argument for Giannis as best player, I can get with that. But if you're going to make an argument for most valuable, well, the numbers, the on-off, net rating, you're not going to find something to support the idea that Giannis has been more valuable to his team than Nikola Jokic has been this season. And also, what I did hear was that in your mind, based on what you've seen, you think Giannis is the MVP. But I'm asking you, that sounds like a, a, a ball watcher protected perspective of uh, what, I, what I'm seeing in front of me is not going to lie. But I'm asking, like, what's the data? Like, what are the numbers? Like, what does the on-court process actually say? Because, again, if, if we're having conversations about MVP, I want to be able to point to data and say, like, look, this is what it is. Even if it's just raw data, Giannis is having a better year than Embiid because he's averaging the same amount of points, the same amount of, of rebound, but more assists. He's a better facilitator. Easy. But even with that, even with the defensive versatility, you saw what happened to Giannis when they played against Dallas the other day and we were guarding Luka Doncic. So defense is, is very important. But what you bring as an offensive player, that is more important with the, what you can do on defense by nature of how the game is played today. And you cannot say any longer that Nikola Jokic is a bad defender or average defender. On the year, he's been good to very good. He's been poor as of late because of the offensive responsibility he's had, and they don't have any other elite defenders on the roster. If he had Drew Holiday, I think it would be a little different. If he had George Hill, I think it would be a little different, but he doesn't. But like I said, as good as Giannis has been, there's only one player in NBA history other than Nikola Jokic to average 35 and 12 over a five-game period, and that's Wilt Chamberlain. So even if we're saying that Giannis is this great player, what we've seen from Nikola Jokic has never been done on an NBA court. So that's, that's why, like, for me, this conversation has turned, because it's not that I don't think Giannis has a case or Embiid has a case. But I think if you just stack the resumes from what they've had to do, plus what you can actually verify in front of you, I think it's just been clear that Jokic has had to been he's been asked to do more. But if your argument is that Giannis is highest in the standings, he's the number two seed, I believe, in the East. Yes, mm -hmm. I can get with it. But like I said, Giannis is also getting credit then for work he wasn't directly responsible for because he missed more games than Jobo and Bede has this season, and because he has a better team, his team has more wins. So I think if we're going to have the conversation about standings and winning, that has to be a component as well. And we saw earlier in the season when. The Bucs started off without Chris Middleton, without Drew Holiday. They were in and out of the lineup for some games, and the Bucs started off slow. At, at one point, they were a bottom six seed in, in the NBA, and it wasn't until their guys got healthy to where yeah. the Bucs have now raised in the standings. Uh, everything that you said, I 100% agree with. I think Nikola Jokic, spoiler alert, he's my MVP. 